Okay, we're going to take a look at uh, Volume 4 in the Battles of the American Revolution series, and this one is Savannah. Now, Savannah was quite different than some of the other titles in the series, and I'll explain why. But to give you a brief overview of the series, Volume 1 was Saratoga, one of my favorites, because I'm a fan of the Battle of Saratoga. Volume uh, 2 was Brandywine, another fine game. Uh, volume 3 was Guilford Courthouse, also featuring the game uh, Utah Springs. And uh, Volume 4 is Savannah. Volume 5 was uh, Monmouth, another very fine game. And uh, Volume 6, I think, what, is Pensacola? I don't think I have that one. Volume 7 is uh, Germantown. Now, all of the games in this series so far have been battle games. But Savannah is quite different in the sense that Savannah was a siege, a famous siege in 1779. So it's quite different than the others in the series. Siege games are um, not very popular. They're very difficult to do. And uh, I'm going to show you how uh, Mark tackled the subject and uh, I think he succeeded uh, very admirably. So let's take a brief look at Savannah and how it works. Okay, we'll begin by just taking a brief look at the board itself. Now this is the Savannah River. The orientation is north is this way. That's south, west, and east. Now most of the action for Savannah takes place around the town proper. And uh, this is generally the British setup. So the board, quite beautiful, most of it actually is not used except for troops coming in from these roads in this direction and here. And the American forces come in from this direction, from South Carolina. So, um, like I said, because it's a siege, most of the action will take place uh, in this section. And uh, let's take a look at the uh, turn record track, because that's what makes this game so unique. Okay, part of what makes Savannah so unique is the dual uh, turn track. There's a strategic turn track, and there's a tactical one. Now, in the strategic turn track, each turn represents one single day. Now, on a scale of one turn per day, units could move almost anywhere they wanted on this board. So, the game is divided into two phases, a strategic phase and a tactical one. Now, when you do go to the tactical phase, each turn then represents one hour. So, generally what happens in the strategic turns, turns 1 through 15, Units will maneuver on the strategic map, and once the French and American um, allies assault the defenses of Savannah, then you're going to be going to the tactical turn, like I said, where it represents one hour. So that's how Marcus handled the um, siege turning into a battle, one might say. And of course, on your map, you've got the um, terrain effects. And, of course, the morale track, which exists on all the other games also. It's a very, very nice map, I might point out. I think all of the maps in the series have been uh, very good. Now, one of the things that makes the Savannah game quite unique from the others is this uh, Savannah event deck. Now, this deck of cards is not to be confused with the tactical cards that later replaced the uh, chits. These cards all represent campaign um, variables which can affect the game. At a certain phase in the game each player, the American French player and the British player will draw strategy cards and will be able to play them in the strategy phase and that will affect things on the ground. For example, here's one sniper. Choose any enemy leader that is adjacent to a friendly combat unit, roll one die and there's various effects. Here's another one, uh, American deserter reveals allied attack plans plus one die roll modifier to the British defense of artillery fire this turn, and so on. And there's, what, I think 55 of these events, which really can add a lot of flavor to the game and will make the game fresh each time you play it. Now, I don't think uh, it's likely you'll go through a whole deck in a single play. Now, I've yet to play Savannah beginning to end, so I can't comment on it overall as a game, as to play balance, things like that. But... Um, from moving the counters around, reading the rules, uh, getting a sense of the thing, it looks like a really uh, fine game. And I certainly uh, like the way Mark has handled um, the subject. 
Heavy rain damages defenses. Sergeant Jasper is killed. Rescuing the colors. I mean, th this is kind of neat. And uh, I guess for a siege game, it's almost essential you have these kind of event cards. Probably wouldn't work for a battle game as well. Like I said, the others in the series are battles. Brandywine, Monmouth, and uh, Savannah is quite different in that it is a siege. Now the counters are the standard ones we've uh, grown to love and appreciate in this series so much. You've got the artillery units, you've got the um, provincial units with the little yellow band, you've got your leader units of course, um, the green units are your Prussians, you've got the French units, the dark blue, and uh, the Patriot units of course are in the light blue. So. Um, Quality-wise, the series has always uh, kept the quality up, and uh, Savannah is no different. Don't know what else to tell you about the game, um, because I haven't really played it out. There are um, There is more than one scenario. There's the Grand Campaign scenario, where you're, like I said, playing the uh, campaign out. You're going to use the strategic cards. And there is tactical um, scenarios, where you do the fighting proper just around... Um, the city of Savannah itself. And they've got all kinds of special rules for the covered way here, the peculiarities of the terrain around um, Savannah. So um, th he's done a very nice job of simulating the siege. And um, based on this system, um, I'd kind of like to see Yorktown done with the same system. I haven't um, really studied Yorktown a lot, but from my sense of the thing is using this system it probably uh, could be done. Look at some other sections of the map here. Bruton's Bluff, Gustav Bluff, Half Moon Bluff. Here's the road that the uh, French reinforcements come in. And the Sunbury Road. You see the, the... It's just a really nice looking map. And just the kind of thing, well, maybe I should uh, shoot a series on this. Uh, but there are other videos out there that show the series, so I'm not sure I can do them as well as other people have. But I just wanted to um, give you a brief uh, look at Savannah and um, hope you consider it in the series. So in a nutshell, that's my summary of the game Savannah. Um, looks like a pretty neat game uh, on an unusual subject. And uh, like I said, sieges aren't usually touched by a lot of gamers, so it's refreshing to see this kind of game out there. So uh, thank you, Mark, for creating uh, Savannah.